Welcome to this informative video on the topic of evoked potentials, EPs, for anesthetists. As a medical professional, you already know how important it is to monitor your patient's vital signs during surgery. However, monitoring brain activity can provide even more crucial information that can help ensure the safety of your patients. This is where evoked potentials come in. In this video, we will explore what EPs are, how they are measured, and the benefits of incorporating EP monitoring into your anesthesia practice. So, whether you are a seasoned anesthetist or a medical student interested in learning more about this fascinating topic, keep watching to discover the important role that EPs play in ensuring safe anesthesia practice. Evoke Potentials, EPs EP monitoring assesses neural function by measuring electrophysiologic responses to sensory or motor pathway stimulation. Commonly monitored EPs are brainstem auditory evoked responses, BEARS, somatosensory evoked potentials, SEPs, and motor evoked potentials, MEPs. For SEPs, an electrical current is applied to a sensory or mixed peripheral nerve by electrodes. If the intervening pathway is intact, the action potential will be transmitted to the contralateral sensory cortex to produce an EP that is detected by scalp electrodes. EPs are plotted as voltage versus time, and the waveforms are analyzed for their post-stimulus latency and peak amplitude. These are compared with baseline tracings to detect neural damage. Indications, surgical procedures associated with possible neurologic injury, including spinal fusion with instrumentation, spine and spinal cord tumor resection, brachial plexus repair, thoracoabdominal aortic aneurysm repair, epilepsy surgery, and cerebral tumor resection. EPs can detect spinal cord or cerebral cortex ischemia and can be used for probe localization during stereotactic neurosurgery. Contraindications. Although no specific contraindications exist for SEPs, they are limited by the availability of monitoring sites, equipment, and trained personnel. MEPs are contraindicated in patients after seizures and any major cerebral insult or with retained intracranial metal, a skull defect, or implantable devices. Brain injury secondary to repetitive stimulation of the cortex and inducement of seizures is a concern with MEPs. Clinical considerations, variables other than neural damage can alter EPs. In general, N2O and opioids cause minimal changes and volatile agents are best avoided or used at a low dose. Changes in bears may reflect depth of anesthesia. Physiologic and pharmacologic factors should be kept constant. Persistent obliteration of EPs is predictive of postoperative neurologic deficit. SEPs identify dorsal spinal cord sensory pathway damage, but not necessarily motor pathway damage. MEPs monitor the ventral spinal cord and are more sensitive to spinal cord ischemia than SEPs. However, monitoring of MEPs requires monitoring the level of neuromuscular blockade, and MEPs are sensitive to volatile agents, high-dose benzodiazepines, and moderate hypothermia, i.e. temperature less than 32 degrees Celsius.